our uh, 2.3 solving quadratic equations by doing something called completing the square. Um, I'll go into this a little bit. I just want to point out that I have step-by-step -step directions over here on how to complete the square. So we'll use these as we do these problems here because there are a lot of steps and so you need to know the steps. Uh, so I wrote those out here in detail for you so you could figure it all out. Um, but let's let's just talk about this exactly. It says it says some quadratic equations already start out as perfect squares. See x minus five squared equals thirty six. It's already a perfect square. We can take the square root of both sides. Get x minus five equals plus or minus six. Then equals five x. Then must equal five plus or minus six. Okay, that's easy because it's already written as a perfect square. However, what if it started like this? This is not written as a perfect square, meaning something inside parentheses and squared. It's just a square here, but then we have this 10x here. We can't just take the square root of both sides and be done. It will get something totally random and it, when it will all work. So we have to do something called completing the square to make it, to, to get it into this format so that it is once again easy to solve. So um, we're going to start off by just completing the square, get it to look, it starts off looking like this to get it looking like that. So we're going to attack x squared, um, x squared minus 10x minus 11, which is the same thing as this equation here. So let's look over here at my steps. The first thing I want you to do is separate out the c value so that you're, you're only focused on the first two terms. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean write it like this. x squared minus 10x, and then just put your negative 11 way over here. Okay, now we have to do a little side work. Okay, it says divide the b value. The b value is this one in the middle by 2 and then square it. So neg let's do it over here. Negative 10 is my b value. Divide it by 2 and then square it. Well, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5, and negative 5 squared is 25. Okay, so my step 2, the value that I got is 25. Then it says, maybe I'll just make a note of that, equals 25. Then it says, add and subtract this value from your expression at the same time so that you have five terms in your expression. Let me show you what I mean by that. You're going to first add it. But you're not allowed to just add something to an expression. That changes its value. So at the same time, we're going to subtract 25. The reason why we can do this is, don't these things just add up to zero? If these things add up to zero, then I have essentially added zero to this expression. I haven't changed its value. I've only changed the way it looks. So now, the reason why we do this is because this is now a perfect square. So I want to just take a time out and say, says, recall that when an expression is in the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, we can rewrite that expression as a plus b squared. So our goal is to make this expression follow the pattern. So this is following this pattern here. We have an a squared, we have a negative 5 squared, and we have 2 times negative 5 times x in the middle. So since this follows that pattern, I can rewrite it like so. It says now the first three terms should follow the pattern for a perfect square, so I rewrite it as a perfect square, x plus d squared. The, the d value in this situation that you have that is just going to be whatever the number was before you squared it here. So negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. So this should look like x minus 5 squared. This guy here is a perfect square, and it's a perfect square of x minus 5. So this is where knowing our patterns is going to still be useful. We can't forget anything we learned last chapter. So this is the same thing as x minus 5 squared. And then I can add these two things together to get negative 36. I've now rewritten this original term followed all the steps as x minus 5 squared minus 36. Now this is written as a perfect square. Okay, I know that's a lot. I know that's a lot of steps. But um, I need you guys to be able to do all those steps. That's what we're working on here. So let's. I want you guys to try the same thing with practice number one. Read the steps one at a time. Do everything like I did here. Um, and you should end up with an answer that looks in, like it's in the same format as this. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do that. And then um, you'll want to pause the video and then come back and check your work. Okay. So I wrote the negative 78 over here. I took my B term, negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. So I added 9 and I subtracted 9 at the same time. This gives me a perfect square of x 
minus whatever is inside these parentheses, or plus whatever is inside these parentheses, which happen to be a negative 3. So x minus 3 squared, and then negative 9 and negative 78 is what's left over. Just combine that to negative 87. Okay, now, now that we've done the steps a couple times for completing the square, now let's apply it to how to solve a problem. It says, once we have rewritten expression as a perfect square, it can be solved easily by the same steps from lesson 2.1. So you can go back and look at those notes or look at that video. So for the following equations, we're going to complete the square and then solve. So let's complete the square here. So let me show you how we would do that. Same steps as before. x squared plus 2x. I'm going to write the minus 8 over here equals 0. 2 divided by 2. I'm not going to write this one out. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1, subtract 1 at the same time. That means this is in a perfect square. It's in the perfect square of um, x plus 1 squared. And then on the outside, I have minus 9 equals 0. All right. If you're confused about the steps for completing the square, again, they're all here. Just read through them. Now, let's solve this. I'm going to move the 9 to the other side. So I add 9 to both sides, giving me x plus 1 squared equals positive 9. Take the square root of both sides, and I get x plus 1 equals plus or minus 3. Subtract 1 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 1, plus or minus 3. This means that x equals negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So there's my two solutions using um, completing the square. All right. I want you guys to try practice number 2 on your own. Um, make sure you uh, pause the video and then check back when you're done. Okay, so I separated it out, put the 24 over here, x squared minus 14x. I needed um, to take 14 divided by 2 gives me negative 7, negative 7 squared gives me 49, so I'm going to add 49 and subtract 49 at the same time. Then I'm only going to focus on these first three, rewrite it as a perfect square. It is whatever the middle thing is divided by 2, so x minus 7 squared. Negative 49 and 24 combine to make negative 25, and I still have an equal 0. I added 25 to both sides, giving me x minus 7 squared equals 25. Take the square root of both sides, I get x minus 7 equals plus minus 5. Ooh, isn't this fun? And then I added 7 to both sides, I got x equals 7 plus or minus 5. That's a 7 plus 5 for 12, a 7 minus 5 for 2. And we have our two solutions, 12 and 2. Um, I did that one fast because it's a practice. Um, to figure out how to do it, go back to the example number two and watch that one again. All right, now, these ones. You're going to see these problems, and your temptation is going to be like, oh, no, there's fractions. I can't do it. It literally is the exact same steps, guys, all the same steps. So don't be scared. We're just doing the same thing. So I said here, don't be scared. Just, just because you run into fractions, keep calm and follow the same steps. So same steps. Let's give it a shot. I got x squared plus 7x, but the minus 8 over here equals 0. Now, I am going to do the side work over here because it's not so easy. Um, I take the 7, I divide it by 2, and I square it. 7, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't reduce nice and neat. So let's just go ahead and square the top. It would be 49, and the bottom would be 4. So I'm going to actually add a 49 fourths and subtract a 49 fourths. Oh my god, they're fractions. This is impossible. No, it's super easy, guys. Same step. Same stuff. So, again, I can write this as a perfect square because this follows the pattern now. Regardless of the fact that it's a fraction or not, it still follows the pattern. So I can write this as x plus, it's just the middle term divided by 2. Well, that's 7 halves. Oops, let's go ahead and do it all in black. x plus 7 halves squared. Over here, we do have to do a little bit of uh, common denominators because we have, that's a negative, just in case you didn't know, negative 49 fourths and negative 8. Well, that's like a negative 8 over 1, so we have to do times by 4, times by 4 on the top and bottom, so we get common denominators, and this is really like saying minus, I'll do it in black, minus, common denominator is 4, 49, and 8 times 4 is 32. Um, I just moved the minus sign out here to write it because I know that a negative um, and a negative when I'm adding just makes a, another negative. So I'm really just going to add these two values together. So let's simplify this down just a little bit. I got x plus 7 halves squared minus 49 and 32 actually makes 81 fourths equals 0. We're almost there. 
add the 81 fourths to both sides. So I got x plus 7 halves squared equals 81 fourths. And now I'm ready to go ahead and take the square root just like I did before. Don't, don't be scared just because it's a square root of a fraction. All the same rules apply. We get an x plus 7 halves equals the square root of 81 is just 9 and the square root of 4 is just 2. Let's put our plus or minus in front though because we took the square root of a number. And one last thing is to subtract 7 halves from both sides. So we get x equals negative 7 halves plus 9 halves, plus or minus 9 halves. Okay, um, this may be a little hard for you guys to see, so I'm actually going to write it out as two problems. We got x equals negative 7 halves plus 9 halves, and we got x equals negative 7 halves minus 9 halves. Over here, we, have, we already have common denominators, so it's really not that bad. 9 and negative 7 just makes 2. So this really equals 2 over 2, which equals 1. Over here, negative 7 and negative 9 make negative 16. So this is negative 16 halves, which makes negative 8. So that's my other solution of negative 8. Okay. Is it more work? Yes. Is it impossible just because it's a fraction? No. I'm following all the same steps that I've done in the last two problems. It's just, yeah, I'm going to have to do a little combining... Um, or, or getting uh, common denominators. So what? It's not hard math. Okay, um, so there's another one here for you. Practice number three, I'd go ahead and try that, pause the video, and uh, check back when uh, you're ready. All right, here's all my work. Um, just kind of briefly go through it. Uh, I divided five by two and got five halves. That's actually right up here. And 5 halves squared is 25 fourths, so that's the number that I'm going to add and subtract at the same time. That means this is a perfect square of x plus 5 halves squared. And if I add these two things together, 25, negative 25 fourths and a positive 4, using common denominators, I end up with a negative 9 fourths. Move the 9 fourths to the other side. And I can now take the square root of both sides, give me x plus 5 halves equals plus or minus 3 halves. Remember, I just take the square root of 9 and the square root of 4 and still write as a fraction. Subtract 5 halves from both sides, and I got negative 5 halves plus or minus 3 halves, and negative 5 halves plus 3 halves is um, negative 1, and negative 5 halves minus 3 halves is negative 4. Just so you know, you can write this in another way. Since these already are common denominators, you can totally write this like this, negative 5 plus or minus 3 over 2. That's the same thing. So that might be a little bit easier for you because you might see, hey, that's the same thing as... Um, negative 5 plus 3 over 2, and negative 5 minus 3 over 2, and then you can see that that's how I got, um, that's how I got negative 2 over 2, or negative 1, and that's how I got negative 8 over 2, and that's negative 4. And so there's, those are my solutions, x equals negative 1 to negative 4, and there we go. All right, my recommendation to you is just have, whenever you're doing problems like this, until the quiz or test, have these notes out so you can just follow it step by step until you don't need them anymore. Okay, so when you're doing con, when you're doing any practice problems, just have these notes out so you can follow these steps and it should make it a lot easier. And also, remember, don't be scared just because they're fractions. You'll see some in class. It's not that, it's not the end of the world. Okay, see you guys on the next video.